So you want to play D&D, or Pathfinder, or Starfinder, or Call of Cthulhu, or Wrath and Glory, or similar. Of course, you need players, and one player needs to be designated as the person, usually called a dungeon master or game master, to play the game world itself. The best way to make an RPG game happen is to volunteer to be the game master yourself. Playing as the game master may seem complex and intimidating at first, but it's easier than you might think. My favorite way to get a new RPG player started as a game master is to play a simple one rule system. I have a video on that, check it out. However, at some point you're going to graduate to published material, because there are a lot of fun game systems out there to try. Here's how to run an official RPG for the first time in your life, in three easy steps. One, get the rules. Unlike a board game, a tabletop RPG is usually just a set of rules. Go buy the rule book or rule books for the system you want to play. What book you need varies on the game. For Pathfinder, you need at least one copy of the core rule book and a bestiary. For Starfinder, you need at least one copy of the core rule book and an alien archive. For Call of Cthulhu, you need at least the Keeper's rule book. For Warhammer, Wrath and Glory, you need at least the core rulebook. There are simpler and zero dollar games out there too that are very much worth playing. Check out Dungeon Raiders, Dungeon Delvers, or Basic Fantasy. Those are great Dungeons and Dragons like games with a simple rule set and no cost. Another option is to go for a starter kit. Pathfinder, Starfinder, and Call of Cthulhu each have starter kits that provide simplified rules, pre-built characters, dice, and basically everything you need to play up to a certain level. These games are infinitely replayable, so using a starter kit isn't a problem. You can play it for years and years and years, and if you do eventually get bored with simplified rules, you'll know it's definitely time to invest more time and money on larger game books. As with board games, you do have to read the rules before playing. If you choose a game with lots of rules, then this process can take days or weeks, depending on how fast of a reader you are. But all you have to do is read the rules. You don't need to memorize them. Just get a feel for the system with a special focus on what kind of dice roll indicates success and what kind of dice roll indicates failure. In D&D and Pathfinder, for instance, rolling a one generally means you get Nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! And rolling a 20 generally means success. Step 2. Buy an adventure. Games with big rule systems usually also offer adventures. In a board game analogy, the adventure is the board, and the rule books you just bought are the game. In a video game analogy, the rule book is the code, and the adventure is the level design. For Pathfinder, download the zero dollar threshold of knowledge. For Starfinder, download the zero dollar Starfinder 4 versus the Hard Light Harlequin. For Call of Cthulhu, download the zero dollar quick start rules which includes a starter adventure. For Warhammer Wrath and Glory, download the zero dollar Reign of Mercy starter adventure. Read the adventure from cover to cover to familiarize yourself. If you're trying out a, a simple system like Dungeon Raiders or Dungeon Delvers or Basic Fantasy, then go to dungeoncontest.com and download a zero dollar dungeon. Read the adventure from cover to cover to familiarize yourself with what's in store for the players. Personally, I take note, using each location as a heading and then listing significant objects that the adventurer's author expects players to interact with. That, of course, doesn't mean that that's all the players are going to interact with, it's just at least you know the things that the author thought they were going to interact with. This ensures you'll have quick access to what's important when you run the adventure. For instance, here's an example entry from my notes for a Threshold of Knowledge, an introductory Pathfinder adventure. A1, Teacher Ott's Office. Read description. Flash beetles. Footprints. Into the hall to A2. Search. DC 14 perception. Under desk. Wooden rabbit mask with violently torn string. Critical success. Scrap of paper with rune. DC 15 Arcana or Nature, Rune is Conjuration, Critical, Rune teleports large masses of water. That's a lot simpler than what's written in the adventure, and this isn't even everything. A DC 14 perception check to search the room. On a success, a hero locates a small wooden mask beneath the desk. This is a student's mask shaped like a rabbit, and its cord has been torn, suggesting it was pulled off during the attack. A critical 
success also turns up a small sheet of paper among the debris. The paper is marked with a strange rune and several notes analyzing various aspects of the rune. A character who su succeeds at a DC-15 arcana or nature check determines that the rune is related to conjuration magic, and the analysis in the notes is actually incorrect and led to false conclusions. A critical success d determines that the rune is related to the teleportation of large masses of water. Whether or not the heroes find any of the above evidence, they do discover a set of damp footprints that lead out into the office and into the hall. <gasps> the footprints have yet to dry up, and the heroes can follow them with ease to the reshelving room on this floor. That's too much to read while you're trying to run the adventure. And it's not really clear what you're supposed to read to yourself and what you can share with players. Now luckily in Paizo's adventures there are text blocks that are very very clearly marked that you can read to the player, and that does contain some of this information. For instance, it talks about the flash beetles that I have in my notes. But it's a lot to process during the game, and so I find it a lot easier to pre-process and make notes for myself, and then refer back to the book when I need the finer details. Do this for each location, noting important dice tests required by the adventure. So for instance, whenever it says DC 15 Arcana or Nature, or DC 14 Perception, that's the number that you want to put into your notes. You can always look back at the books while players are busy rolling their die. As you play, add to your notes based on important things the player characters do. For instance, if a character takes a framed portrait from a foyer, then you might make note of it so that when your players return to the foyer later, you remember that one portrait is no longer there. For example, one entrance, doors to area 1B, shield with family crest, portraits of nobles, player took one. So when your players return to the foyer later, you remember that one portrait is no longer there. Step three, roll some dice. Gather some friends, tell them you've never run an RPG before, but you've decided to try. Help them create characters or give them a pre-built character if your game system provides those. If your game system doesn't provide them, there's often pre-built characters available online somewhere. I have a few videos on creating characters quickly. These are obviously limited to specific game systems, but the general advice is universal. Create characters quickly, in a quarter of an hour, so everyone can start playing promptly. There's nothing less fun than being invited over to play a board game and then spending two hours filling out tax forms instead. Now start playing. 1. Tell the players where their characters are and what they see around them. 2. Listen to the players when they tell you what they want to do. 3. Tell the players the outcome of their actions, based on either common sense or the roll of a die. Cycle through these steps, trust the system, this is how it works. Eventually your players will make their way to the end of the adventure, or they'll all be killed, and you're a game master now, you've run your first role-playing game. It's that easy. In my opinion, running a pre-written adventure is actually an advanced or at least intermediate game master activity. I have a separate video on my recommended way of getting started. But there are definite advantages to running a pre-written adventure. It's a lot of fun, there's a lot of great stories out there to be played, and new ones are being published every day. Whether you use a published adventure as material for your first Game Master experience, or whether you do something simpler is up to you. But published adventures are a lot of fun, role-playing games are a lot of fun. I hope this video has made it seem approachable for you. Go try it out.